Okay, so today we're going to be looking at our index laws. Um, broadly speaking, this video is going to be split up into four parts. Um, first of these is just your basic index laws. So we're going to be taking a look at um, topics roughly equivalent to a B grade or a C grade at GCSE. Um, second part of the video, fractional indices. Third part of the video, um, negative indices. And the fourth part of the video, which I think is probably going to be of most benefit to um, the vast majority of you, we're going to be combining both our fractional indices laws and our negative indices laws to look at the more difficult types of um, AS level questions that might come up. Right, so first of all, basics, basic index law type questions. Um, if I have a to the power m, so a number raised to a power, and then the same number raised to another power, and I'm multiplying those two together, I'm going to simply add my powers. Okay, so if I have 3 times raised to the power 2, and I'm multiplying that by 3 to the power 3, so notice I've got the same base there, 3 to the raised to a power, multiplied by 3 raised to a different power, I'm going to simply add my powers there. Okay, so 2 adds my 3, gives me that single power 5 up there. Um, second of all, we're going to look at division. So just remember division, inverse operation to multiplication. So you expect the, the reverse to happen up here in that if I have um, something raised to a power divided by um, that same number raised to a different power, I'm now going to subtract my powers. Okay, so going back the other way, 3 to the 5 divided by 3 to the 3 gives me 3 to the power 2. Um, multiplication or my powers of powers rule. So here um, I've got something raised to a power all raised to another power. I'm going to simply multiply my powers up here. Okay, so if I have 3 to the power 3, multiplying this by, sorry, raising this to the power 2, my single power up there, well, I multiply my 3 by my 2 to give me a 6 up there. So that's your basic index laws all covered. <laughs> Right, so fractional indices. Let's uh, take a look at the form of the rule in uh, its general form. So if I have a to the power of m over n now, so we're looking at fractional indices, um, notice it's always going to involve a root of some, some kind. So sometimes it will be a square root, sometimes it will be a cubed root. Um, my big number goes there. Okay, my... Um, little number, so the, the root that you're actually looking at goes here, um, and then this number here, the numerator of the fraction, goes outside. So that's all going to be raised to the power m. Uh, what does this look like in a more specific form? Well, if I have the number 9, that's raised to the power half. Here you notice my a, so the number underneath the square root sign is just going to be n. Um, it's, it's going to be 9, rather. Um, what power am I looking at? Well, there's a 2 here. The denominator of the fraction is a 2, so I'm looking at the square root. Okay, and now this is all raised to the power, all raised to the power 1 in this case, but I mean, that's almost irrelevant. You know, the power, anything raised to the power 1 is just itself, so you can just disregard this um, 1 in many respects. And so all I'm looking for here is the square root of 9, so that's just going to give me 3. Um, now, slightly more complicated, if I have a 3 up here, how does this change things? Well, still I'm looking at um, a, a big 9 underneath the square root sign. I'm still looking at the square root to begin with, but now this is all raised to the power 3. So whereas we had a power 1 up here, um, and I could just almost ignore it, now I have a power 3, which does complicate matters. So again, working with this um, bit in the brackets first, I've got the square root of 9, which gives me 3 again. Okay, but now I need to raise that all to the power of 3. Okay, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Um, so just when you're working through these exercises, make sure you're familiarising yourself with square numbers and cube numbers. Cube numbers aren't particularly difficult. You might think, oh, if I've got to times a number by itself, by itself again, and then by itself again, uh, to get the cube of that number, it's going to give me an enormous number. That being said, you're never really going to be asked for... Um, the cube root of 11, say. The biggest cube number, cube root, sorry, cube number that you will look at is 1,000, 10 times 10 times 10. As you're going through the exercise in class and as you're going through the exercises on my website, um, these numbers, they will stick in your head. Right, so um, that's nine 
raise to the power of 3 over 2. Let's look at one more example just to see whether it's stuck. Okay, so here, again, what's the number that's going underneath the root sign? Well, in this case, it's clearly going to be 8. Am I looking at square roots here? Am I looking at cube root here, etc., etc.? Well, the denominator of the fraction is a 3, so I'm looking at the cubed root. And what's this being raised to? Well, it's all being raised to the power of 4. Okay, 4 is the numerator on my fraction there. Right, working with the bit in brackets first, um, again, you should... Like I said, you will become more familiar with these uh, cube numbers as you go along. Um, so we're looking for the cube root of 8 here. What times by itself, times by itself again, gives me um, the number 8. Well, it's number 2. Um, these always do come out as um, whole numbers. And then this is all raised to the power of 4. So I need 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. Okay. Um, just a quick note here. Um, so for either of these two examples where essentially you're performing two operations, so you're finding, um, so for this first example, you're finding the square root and then cubing that answer. You could actually do it the other way around. Um, so you could, first of all, um, cube 9, which would give you a very big number, and then finding the square root would indeed give you 27. But it's always, always, always going to be easiest to uh, perform the cube root or the square root operation first, and then... Um, cube that number or, or square that number, etc. afterwards because you'll be working with a smaller number here. Um, if for this second example you try to uh, cube 9 to begin with, you're going to be, given, be left with a very big number and you won't be able to identify what that square root is going to be. In this case, it was going to be 27. Okay, so always perform the operation in brackets first, i.e. the square root or the cube root, and then after that, um, apply the square or the cube afterwards. <laughs> Now moving on to my uh, negative indices. Uh, general form of the rule, if I have something raised to a negative power, it's always going to be 1 over. That's what you want to be thinking about it in terms of. It's always going to be 1 over something. Um, and now in terms of what goes on the bottom of that fraction, my big number goes there, and that's all raised to a power. So notice here, this negative sign disappears. This power here is always going to be positive. Um, so what does this look like in practice? Well, if I have 3 to the power of minus 2, okay, first thing you want to be thinking about, negative power means 1 over. 1 over. What's my big number here? It's 3. What's my small number here? It's 2. Remember, it's a positive 2. Okay, that comes out as 1 over 9. Go away, pen window. Um, similarly, if I have 4 to the minus 3, again, it's going to be 1 over 4 raised to the 3 in this case, which is the same as 4 to the 3 gives me 64. Uh, just one thing to look out for here. Um, so if I have, rather than the whole number, I now have a fraction raised to a negative power. So let's go for um, 1 over, we haven't had this one, 1 over 5 to the power of minus 1. Okay, again you want to be thinking about this in terms of um, it's going to be 1 over something, but in this case what's it going to be? What's going to go on the bottom of this fraction? Well it's going to be 1 over 5 again, all raised to the power of 1. Okay, so because it's being raised to the power of 1, I'm not going to put this in brackets and put a 1, I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, this actually comes out as uh, 5 over 1 or just 5. There's two reasons, um, two, two ways you can look at this. So you've got 1 over 1 over 5. And just remember, if you do um, the same operation, um, if you multiply or divide the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number, you maintain its value. So if you look at this fraction here, if I multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 5, I'm left with 5 on the top. 1 over 5 multiplied by 5 gives me 1, um, and 1 on the bottom. Okay, so that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is this. So I have 1 divided by 1 over 5. Okay, and just remember your laws when you are um, dividing fractions. Okay, I'm going to change my division to a multiplication. So in this case it becomes 5 over 1, and then 
um, sorry, flip over that bottom fraction. So anytime you're dividing a fraction, number one, change my division to a multiplication. Number two, I'm going to change my um, second fraction. I'm going to flip it over, okay? One times by five over one just gives me five over one or five. Okay, so similarly, if I have this one over, let's go for four, all raised to the power of minus two. Okay, again, following my um, negative indices law up here, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with one over something because it's negative indices. One over four on the bottom, and that's all squared. Right, so we're just going to work on the bottom of that fraction now. One over four all squared, same as one over four times by one over four, excuse me, one over 16. Okay, I'll just put this in a little bubble here. Um, one over four times by one over four equals one over 16. And now following my laws up here, I've got a fraction over a fraction, a fraction within a fraction. How do I get rid of this fraction? Well, I can multiply top and bottom by 16 there. It gives me 16 over one or just 16. So all I'm doing here is applying the same principle as I had over here. So we're gonna finish off by looking at um, the harder types of questions. So more often than not, these will involve um, fractions as your bases and probably a combination of both your fractional indices and your negative indices laws. So let's take a look at something like this. Um, so just remember your, I'll just write these here for reference. If I have this, a to the minus m, so you know that this is the same as um, one over something, one over a to the m. Um, so remember, any time negative indices are involved, it's going to mean 1 over. Um, and then my fractional indices laws, it's going to involve a combination of both square or cube roots and squares as well. So two operations. Now let's take a look at this. So if I have 1 over 64, all raised to the power half. So just mean, remember that the power of half all it means is, is, is a square root. It's more complicated if this number up here is, um, is a three, say, or a four, or this number here is a, is a three, but if it's just to a power half, um, you could write it all out like this and it'd come out exactly the same, but to the power of half just means the square root. Right, so I've got the square root of one over 64. Another way of looking at this is like this. So I can actually split this up into the, so rather than having the square root sign over the entire fraction, I can have the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So in this case, just take a look at what we've got here. Um, first thing you should notice when you're looking at this or this is that we're dealing with number 64. Number 64, number 16, number 36, number 25. Obviously they come up a lot when you're doing um, laws of indices work because they're all square numbers. Um, so here I've got the square root of one, which is just one. Here the square root of 64, which gives me eight. Um, so answer here is just one over eight. Okay, how does this change when my, my exponent is now negative rather than positive? Okay, so all we're doing here is essentially combining our two laws. Remember, so one over, because of this negative sign here, we've got a negative exponent, so it's gonna be one over something, and what's, what's going to be on the bottom? Well, it's just going to be essentially this. Um, one over 64, all square rooted. Okay, so that's the same as one over one over eight. Okay, and just remember our laws from the third part of the video. I've got a fraction over a fraction here. How do I get rid of that fraction on the bottom? I can multiply top and bottom by eight, which gives me eight over one or just eight. So that's my uh, combining my negative and my fractional indices laws. Let's just do one more now. So again, combining um, 
combining the two, but we're going to jazz things up a bit and make these exponents slightly more difficult. So uh, rather than having um, a, to the power half, let's do to the power of two over three. See if I can make up an example on the spot. Again, it's going to be, let's go for something slightly more, di more difficult. So 27 on the bottom. Um, and now let's have, uh, it's got to be a cube number on top. Let's go for eight. Um, so what does this come out as? Well, we have, uh, essentially what you can do is, you know you need, it's going to be eight over 27 as the thing underneath the square root sign. What's going to be the little number up here? It's going to be your three. So I'm looking at the cube root of this, all squared. Okay, um, now, so if I have, rather than having this big square root sign up here, again, I can do what I've done here, or here, I guess, and split up that big square root sign such that I have the cube root of the numerator and the cube root of the denominator. Both, both squared. So again, just look out for your square numbers, your cube numbers. Okay, obviously eight comes up a lot, 27 comes up a lot because it's the uh, the, the cube of three, the cube of four is 64, cube of five, one, two, five, etc. These numbers come up time and time again, so just look out for them. Um, now working this out, cube root of eight, as we said, is two, cube root of 27 is three. We've still got these squares here. Final answer, four over nine. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of this middle line here. So don't worry if you haven't taken note of this, full, full work solutions and full notes are all available from my website. Link should be popping up just now. Um, so again, very quickly, what would happen if this became a negative? Well, essentially what you'd have is one over all of this. So one over this whole thing here, I could work it all out, and it, uh, the final answer, you'd have one over four over nine. So just transferring that answer over here, here. Well, how do I get rid of that um, nine on, on the bottom of the fraction? How do I get rid of that fraction within a fraction? I can times top and bottom by nine, and that just gives me nine over four. So if you notice my negative powers here, First of all, you should be thinking, well, negative power, that means one over. What does one over mean when, as far as a fraction is concerned? Well, all I'm going to do is flip over the fraction. Okay, so one over four over nine is the same as nine over four. And similarly, if I had um, one over six over seven, uh, that'd be the same as seven over six. <laughs>